Hey, hey, you guys, it's Christina from the Purple Alphabet. We were talking about counting syllables today. I have a whole bunch of activities that you can do from all sorts of different levels. Really simple learning how to count syllables all the way to a little bit more complex. These are in no particular order. And as always, I hope that you adapt them to what works with your child. The first one I have is a worksheet or actually they're cards. I printed them out here and left them. I haven't cut them out yet, but you should cut them out and laminate them. And then you're gonna need a manipulative. I have these little beads that I got from the Dollar Tree, which are perfect for this. You could use little Play-Doh balls that would be a lot of fun and whatever else you may have around the house this is from this reading mama.com and basically what you do is you segment each picture on the card and then place one of your little manipulatives in the boxes below so for instance tish you helicopter so that way you can release here and physically place one of these little manipulatives in each box for each syllable. This game from Lakeshore Learning I have shown before. It's a really simple game. I love it a lot and it's for ages four and up. And there are four boxes in here with a number, one, two, three, and four. And they're little baskets, see them right inside. And then you get all of these acorns and you just basically say the word that's on the acorn and you count the syllables as you go along. So what we did is we'd pick one of these acorns and then my children would clap caterpillar and see how many times they clapped and then they would put it in the appropriate bucket and then on the back what I do like is that they would self check so after they finished they would make sure they found each one of these pictures that are on the back that belong in the actual basket so this was great for starting out and it was also great because they were able to finally do it on their own this is both my three-year-old and my four-year-old were doing this besides clapping another way you could use is a drum or a musical instrument and instead of clapping one two three four you could tap on the drum one two three four or play on the xylophone one two two, three, four. So if you have a child that likes cut and paste, there's this really great chart. This is for syllable counts one, two, three. So there's this little chart and then you print out these little objects. It comes with two sheets of different cards. So you can cut them out or you can have your child cut them out. I think if they cut them out, it's much better if they're able to do that. I have some here that I've cut out from the second sheet and this is just a sorting. So you would have all of these cards and they would go through each one by one. This one says globe. So that would go in here and they would cut and and paste it on here. You don't have to paste them if you don't want to. If you want to reuse it, you can just keep them as is, maybe laminate them, use some Velcro to stick them on here. That might be a lot of fun. But I also think pasting is a great skill for preschoolers to work on. So you might want to consider doing a cut and paste for this one. This is a great notebooking activity too, if you want to glue and paste this into a whole notebook and then see their progress as they go along. This activity is a really good one too, but I might have printed this out a little bit bigger um, next time around because they're kind of small here. But it is a punch activity. So I have a little puncher here. You can buy these punchers in all different kinds of shapes, maybe stars and circles. A regular hole punch will work just fine. If you don't have a hole punch, another option would be to use stamps if you printed these out a little bit bigger. So I have all these little hand stamps here and you can stamp instead of punching. But these are cards that I printed out and it has numbers here on the side that correspond and you have to pick which one is the correct number. So hamburger has three syllables and you would just punch out the three on the card. So great um, coordination with the hand making sure you punch out the right one. Another thing you can do is you wanna reuse them, laminate these and then use clothes pins and put the clothes pins on the correct number instead. But I kinda of thought the hand punch was a little bit fun twist on this one. Or you can use the stamps to stamp in the correct spots. On Pinterest, this is a really great activity that I found that involved these push lights from Dollar Tree. And I've seen people using these push lights for all sorts of things, but this would be also great for phonics. So I got four of them here. Unfortunately, I don't have the batteries that go inside, so I can't light them up for you. So you Use your imagination there maybe on Instagram when I get my batteries I will post um, a video on how I use these but then you'll need some kind of flashcards or objects I happen to have these object cards from a different activity if you don't have those you could use some flashcards that have pictures on them these would work really well or even magnet using one of these magnets this is a whole bunch of Melissa and Doug magnets that have animals on them that would be a lot of fun too please show one picture card and then your child will look at the picture card and they would say zebra Z bruh and they would punch out the syllables that way and then here's umbrella umbrella and they would go the whole time and then it's just a really fun thing to light them up as they go along and a very great way to make sure they segment each syllable umbrella Oh, I wish I had my lights. Sorry about that, guys. You can also label your buttons, and when they do their flashcards or their animals or their magnets, 
they can say giraffe, that's two, and put it in the two column, dinosaur. And then to put all of their animals in certain piles or all their flashcards in certain piles, and that way they can categorize each one of them and visually see the number along with it. Even if you don't have these little push buttons, you don't have to have them. You can just use the numbers themselves, and then you can take your stack of cards, your magnets or whatever, and just place them in the correct pile. If you wanna get really tactile, you can get a muffin tin like this. This one came from Dollar Tree. And then you'd put your flashcards in the other side matching, like that. This next one's probably a little bit more advanced. I have my magnetic letter box here, and you would need just a cookie sheet from Dollar Tree would work, and then some word flashcards, and you would take the word, place it on your magnetic pan, and then you take your movable alphabet and find all the letters to that word. So this is really great letter practice and spelling practice spelling out the words. Now my movable alphabet's all uppercase, but I'm okay with that. And then once you spell out the words, you need to figure out the syllables. So jacket, you could even use your number cards to signify the two syllables. And then you're going to separate out the syllables. So like I said, this is far more advanced. A preschooler is not going to be able to get this concept. Um, somebody who is writing will, so jack get. So we separated out the word into two syllables. Now I love to keep my kids active, so I have a whole bunch of play food here. Um, these came from Lakeshore Learning. You can also just use anything you have in the house. Play food, toys, characters from cartoons, more magnets, just anything. I really mean that. And then if you grab some floor tape, this is from Dollar Tree. It's some really great floor tape. It's a dollar for a roll. Or you can use masking tape or painter's tape, and you're going to create a pattern on the floor, just kind of like kind of like hopscotch. So just put some boxes on the floor. Four would probably do you. And then you would take your play food, like this one, and you would jump out the syllables. Banana. And you would jump all the way to the box three and you could place your banana in box three or next to it because you're going to be jumping in it some more. And you can go through a whole bowl, a whole stack of cards, magnets, or objects this way. And it's a very good active game, particularly for those preschoolers who like to move. Let me know down in the comments what kind of activities you're going to be doing with your kids to count syllables. Or if you do some different ones, I'd love to hear. Don't forget, I have a really great giveaway going on from Wednesday's video. Go back and watch that because you can win a Meals with Milton or a Fun Bites cutter set. And you're definitely not going to want to miss those. It's a really good giveaway. Make sure to click subscribe to see more videos like this and give me a thumbs up to show your love.